concept of anticipatory governance is is about really preparing for the unexpected. It's about looking looking to the future, expecting horizons of change, and being very um, very intentional about understanding those changes, um, those shifts, and and setting direction. You know, um, for where you want to shape whether it's policy or strategy moving into the future. We sometimes think as the future is something linear that will happen irrespective. Um, but when you engage in futures literacy, one starts realizing that the future is in the making um, and that there may be more than one future. Uh, so in simple terms, the future is what we make of it. An anticipatory government uh, is needed because many forthcoming changes are unprecedented. Their magnitude and intensity are so high that traditional frameworks are simply unable to address them. Consider climate-related changes, just to make the, simple, uh, the simplest exemplification that comes to mind. I mean, governance at the end of the day is really all about how we organize ourselves in our societies and our economies. And anticipatory governance opens up a complete new space. So for me, it would be about exploration, experimentation, really, and finding local, contextually relevant ways of, of dealing with this volatile change and, and some very, very wicked problems that we have in the region. The anticipatory governance is, is really um, a useful tool for um, for policy and strategy because policy generally you want to be ahead of issues and so you want to have a sense of that lens of where things are changing where things could potentially disrupt or converge and you want to be ahead of that you want to be able to anticipate it and you want to be able to kind of shape the direction um, of where you want to navigate your policy or your strategies or your investments it's important uh for Sadiq policymakers, because as a continent, we have a history of exploitation of our destiny being determined by outside forces. Um, and we know the future will not be different unless we actively become uh, futures literate and we actively work towards the future we want. So the basic question for Sadiq policymakers is in whose future will we be living? Um, by exploring different futures and strategies and finding those opportunities, uh, we can enable alternative futures and adjust our planning and our policies accordingly. I have a feeling there might be some agreement about why anticipatory governance is important. It's about this volatile change we're facing. So the VUCA conditions, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. It's also about wicked complex problems. And we, we certainly have some pervasive wicked problems in the SADC area that need addressing pervasive poverty, inequality, there's a number of them. On top of which, we're facing these critical convergent crises. So we know climate change and its impacts, um, biodiversity loss, um, kind of the fallout, the economic fallout from the COVID pandemic. COVID-19 has been an accelerator. It has helped and magnified uh, transformations and changes that were or already ongoing. So in that sense, uh, it has made things uh, faster, even faster than, than usual. From that point of view, it is not a game changer in a proper sense, it's a game accelerator. For this reason, it is advisable to, uh, I mean, being able to accept and implement an anticipatory framework, so to say beforehand, without uh, uh, losing too much time in thinking about what needs to be done. So anticipatory governance is, is really important moving into the future. Um, COVID-19 is a really good example of just a lot of the, um, the challenges, the, the systemic challenges that we've experienced with a pandemic that scaled um, and created significant disruption beyond what most policymakers or those working in emergency and disaster management 
ever anticipated or thought was even possible. So it really challenged um, a lot of mindsets around possibility. And so I think moving into the future, um, it, it's, it's, it's important to, to um, appreciate the role of anticipatory governance and that, and the changing environment and how those changes can dramatically shape the landscape that we're operating in. Uh, one of the problems that most uh, governments face uh, is that the information that arrive at the, at the center is different from the information that is available on the ground. Okay, in order to implement an anticipatory framework, we have to give more power to people intervening on the ground. And this requires a pretty uh, serious reorganization of most legacy systems. Um, uh, many times, especially in, you know, in the work that I do in emergency and disaster management in that field, it's very risk focused, or um, there's a lot of focus in, in businesses about compliance with, with risk. And so risk is a really big, important motivator for anticipatory action, but it's, it's limiting, right? Because you're just looking at the threat. You're not looking at the opportunities of anticipatory governance or anticipatory thinking. And so having a broader space to, to understand the shifts, not just from a risk, threat, or, or disruption, but also for new opportunities. To, to change the narrative, to change the direction, to start to engage with bigger ideas around the future. And, and so we're seeing some of these bigger global agendas that talk about sustainability, that talk about resiliency, but we don't see a lot of big visions of what that could look like. And so I think there's, there's a, a significant opportunity moving into the future to have these types of conversations about how do you build sustainable world? What does that look like? And, and there's a significant role for policy to open up their policy levers to create and to allow for those opportunities of change to flourish in the system. It makes us accountable as SADC to the next generation. Um, we hold the future of the next generation in our hands. And the question is if we leave them with uh, more legacies, um, such as corruption, such as the extraction of our resources, more conflict, or are we unlocking uh, a sustained uh, future for them? I think that uh, an anticipatory uh, governance framework uh, require uh, public officials with high levels of training, higher than the role they play. That's something unusual within legacy systems because we usually have a hierarchy and the people at each level of the hierarchy are supposed to know some part of what uh, the what is needed. Okay, we need people knowing more than the level at which they intervene, because this gives them a wider perspective, the capacity to better understand what's ongoing and to take better decisions. The one other thing that's important with regard to anticipatory governance and, and principles of anticipatory governance are the skills needed. And um, there's some lovely work done by Nesta which mentions these skills. And I think they should be acquired and nurtured in the region. And these are skills like being agile. So, so the ability to respond to changing environments and conditions, a curiosity, um, being reflective, sort of having the habit of critically reflecting on, on process and, and policy. Um, being willing to take risk, that's a skill. It can be acquired, it can be nurtured. Um, imaginative, a resilience, of course, is critically important. And then, of course, being empathetic. Understanding others' experiences and frames of reference is going to be critical going forward if you want to be working with anticipatory governance and its systems perspective continuing to work within traditional legacy systems became promises to become more and more dysfunctional and that's a problem that's a problem for decision makers but that's a problem especially for people 
and uh, there will be consequences, I suppose, if traditional dysfunctional legacy systems are maintained in, uh, in activity.